Mayors, this is Mrs. Scott Nikki here, and today I am going to be talking to you a little bit about making that transition from organized notes to rough draft. Um, as you can see here on the screen in front of you, I have the very beginnings of my rough draft. I have not made very much progress yet, um, but I thought that this would be a good time for me to talk to you because I can explain some of the challenges that I am working through as I start to write my draft and knowing that you're probably going to be experiencing some of those same challenges. So I'm going to hop back first to this other tab, which is uh, my organized notes. And as you can see, my first set of organized notes here has the topic sentence or the subtopic um, expressed as a topic sentence uh, that reads, the United States has a long history of distance learning and that tradition is likely to continue. Um, I came up with that when I was going through my notes because I realized that I, I did have a bit of historical or background information on my topic and it would probably make sense to put all of that background information together into one paragraph um, and perhaps even share that information with the reader um, fairly early in my paper so that as the reader starts to learn more about distance learning, um, that person also knows um, a little bit about the history and where this topic came from. So as you can see in my organized notes, I have four points here. Um, a couple um, from my red source, one blue source, one green source, and then down here at the bottom I, I move to my second subtopic. So I'm going to jump back over here to my rough draft and what I want you to see is that I have compressed that information a great deal. Um, and this is a particularly useful writing skill. Um, if you can say something in 200 words, um, well, that's good. But if you can say the same thing in 100 words, that's even better. Because, of course, um, your reader's time and patience are limited. And so to say something as efficiently as possible is always a goal in writing. Um, I have a habit of perhaps writing down too much information when I take notes. And, and I think that is both um, a good thing and a bad thing. Obviously, it means that I have to do a bit more compression when I transfer over to my drafting. But the good thing is I'm never short on notes. And as long as I'm willing to sacrifice um, some of those words, well, then it's not really a problem moving over to my draft. Um, so my goal is always to um, say what I need to say, but say it as succinctly as possible. And so you can see I did that. I compressed the two bits of information from the red source. Um, and and then I have the slightly compressed um, piece of information from the blue source. Um, you'll notice that the green source is missing altogether. And that's because when I took a look at it in detail, I realized that it's not really so much about history, um, but it has more, this particular piece of information has more to do with methods um, than it does with history. And so I decided that it didn't really belong in this paragraph and I moved it to a different subtopic. So I'll deal with it later, but that's a problem Problem, and it's not really a problem, but that's something that will probably come up in your own uh, research or rather writing as you move from notes to draft, you'll figure out that you perhaps have um, some pieces of information that don't fit and you need to move them around. And that's just reflective of good thinking. Um, you are doing what writers do, and that's to organize information so that the reader can understand what it is you're trying to say. The other thing I'd like you to notice about this particular paragraph is that um, each little bit of information has been explained. And the point there is that 
Um, and you can tell it's been explained because that's the stuff that's in black font. And the point there is that I don't know, or rather your reader doesn't know why a particular piece of information is important. And, um, and so I wanted you to start to think about that when you did analysis for your notes, um, but you're going to continue to work with that explanation um, as you polish those notes and refine the information so that it really flows, um, so that um, your reader can be led by you um, from point one to point two to point three and why it all matters. Um, you and I can both read the same article about a topic, um, but you and I will come to very different conclusions about why it matters. And so all of this black font here, right, this represents your thinking. And in fact, that's the most interesting thinking in your paper. So um, pay particular attention to the points that you make. All right, so that's one, one paragraph. Another thing I'd like you to notice about this paragraph is that I have ended it with my own voice, right? I started this paragraph with my own voice um, in the form of this subtopic topic sentence, and I have ended it here in my own voice as well. And that's really um, a, a good thing to aim for. There may be a few odd exceptions to that rule, um, but for the most part, you want to begin and end uh, body paragraphs with your own voice. Um, as I move to the second paragraph, um, you'll see much the same. I try to compress the information that was in um, my thesis organized notes. As you can see, this is quite a lengthy section here, um, but when I have moved to my rough draft, I've compressed that a, a great deal. And I also have some information down here that I have yet to attach, and I wanted to talk to you about that for a minute. Um, I could put this information, this stuff that's kind of in this like slightly pink font here, into this paragraph, which is about creating a community of learner learners because um, these particular points have to do with creating a community of learners, um, but they're also about a synchronous um, virtual classroom. And I have, I know because I created that, a particular section in my paper where I intend to deal with synchronous online classes. And so at the moment, I have to make a decision. Do I include this information here um, with the paragraph that I have about creating a community of learners, or do I save this information and revisit the topic um, very, very briefly when I move to a later subtopic and I'm talking about synchronous online classes? And the, the short answer is that I don't know yet. Um, I'm not sure where that information will fit best, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, what I'm going to do, however, since I don't quite know what I want to do with it, I'm just going to put it on hold. I'll leave it right where it is. I know what that information is. Um, and then when I get um, further, in my writing process and I get closer to that particular paragraph, I'll either decide, you know what, that paragraph that I have about synchronous education is really kind of a monster and I have way too much information in it anyways, so I'm going to address it up above or perhaps I'll decide that nope, it makes sense to keep it all together and I'll put it with that subtopic. Um, all of these decisions um, are decisions that um, you will have to make as well, um, but I want you to know that um, there are the right answer is simply the answer that makes sense to you in your paper. Um, and as long as you have a reason for putting a particular um, piece of information somewhere, then, then that's appropriate. All right, so um, I look forward to seeing your rough drafts emerge 
and please remember you can always reach out with questions or comments. All right, have a good afternoon. Take care.